Hello, and welcome to the Art of Living Well podcast. I'm Stephanie May Potter, and I'm here with my co-host, Marnie Dotches marmet We created the Art of Living Well podcast to empower you to live your happiest, healthiest, and most authentic life. Each week, we will bring you inspiring and motivating conversations covering health and wellness topics, including fitness, mindset, food, travel, product reviews, and strategies from a variety of experts, including our own bank of knowledge. We are excited to educate, motivate, and inspire you to change the way you perceive health and discover your art of living well. Get ready to feel inspired. Hello, and welcome to episode number four of the Art of Living Well podcast. I'm Marnie Duchess Marmet, and I am here with my co-host, Stephanie May Potter. On today's episode, we're going to share our top 10 tips for thriving, not just surviving this holiday season. But before we get into our strategies, Marnie Marnie found an interesting study this week that we thought we'd share with everyone. Yeah, so this study that just came out from the ecology department at the University of Minnesota said that eating right is not only good for us, but it's also good for the planet. And um, I, I just love that. And I saw it said that vegetables, fruits, nuts, whole grains, olive oil, and fish can all reduce your risk of death and disease when you're consuming these foods as part of your regular diet, but they're also associated with low environmental impact. You know, it makes perfect sense, and it's just yet another reason to eat more plant-based foods, right? Absolutely. So very exciting. Awesome. All right, let's dive right into this topic du jour. Actually, before we dive in, I was just thinking about like highs and lows for the week. And I was thinking that this week has been so amazing because we actually launched our first episode of our podcast. We're super excited. I think, Marnie, I can speak for both of us. This was definitely our high after months of preparation. So we're very excited for all you guys listening today. Um, And I didn't really have a low. Did you have a low, Marnie? Not really. I didn't either. I would say that, you know, the weather is starting to turn a little bit and it's getting kind of cold outside and I'm really starting to feel it in my bones. But that's what you get for living in Minnesota. Exactly. I guess. As long as the sun is shining, I can deal with it. Which it is today. So that's good. Yes. All right. So let's dive right into today's topic. The holiday season's approaching, and we're going to talk about ways that you can thrive, not just survive, this holiday season, because it's such a wonderful time of year. But with Thanksgiving, holiday parties, the gift-giving season, and New Year's right around the corner, we thought it would be great to share with you some of our tips and strategies on how to have an amazing holiday season, but not feel like you're completely falling off the wagon come January. Um, So with that, let's get started, Marnie. So one of the first things I wanted to talk about are smoothies. I love smoothies. I'm such a huge proponent of smoothies. I literally drink one just about every single day unless it's like a brunch day and I'm going out to brunch or something and then I'll have an omelet, but that's a whole other story. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, smoothies are a great way to start your day. You get nutrients in them. You can get vitamins and minerals in them. And they keep you pretty full for a long period of time. They can help you manage your blood sugar. And um, I just think during the holidays, especially if you're not drinking a smoothie every day, it's a great time to think about adding one in. And on a day when you have a party to go to or something, you can even add in a second smoothie, like right before you go. So you're not going to the party starving and... That's like you the know, worst thing you can do, right? right? When you go when you go to something and you're absolutely starving, that's when you can sometimes make or I can make poor choices for sure. So I like to prepare myself um, by again starting out my day with a smoothie, but then perhaps having a second smoothie. I think we're gonna link up or put a couple quick recipes in the show notes so that you guys know some of our favorite smoothies and the ingredients so that you can create a really healthy, nourishing, balanced smoothie because every smoothie is not created equal, right? (laughs) Absolutely. There's definitely, you could potentially make a smoothie that has way too much sugar in it, so. Yes, so that will be a topic for another day. Um, And so kind of piggybacking off the smoothie, because it is so hydrating first thing in the morning, is just, and again, this is not shocking to anyone, it shouldn't be, drink plenty of water throughout the day. 
right? But you'd be surprised how many people forget to drink water. Absolutely. Especially during the holiday season, you're running around, you're in and out of the car. Maybe it's not, since it's not summer and depending on where you live, it's colder. So maybe you're not, you're not like hot and sweaty and you don't feel yourself needing the water. But how much water do we need? Like half of our body weight in ounces, we should be consuming in water every day, right? Which is, uh, people think that's a ton of water, but it's actually... No, right. Um, so when you're at a party, the other thing, the other tip I like to implement for myself is just drink a glass of water and it could be a sparkling water or whatever. Drink one glass of water for every alcoholic drink if you're going to um, consume alcoholic beverages and it helps you stay hydrated, control your intake. So maybe you're not going to drink as much and then you're going to feel so much better in the morning. You're not going to wake up with that hungover feeling because your body is just super dehydrated. And speaking of alcohol, do you have like a favorite low sugar or no sugar cocktail that you like? I do. And as much as I like wine, I'm kind of particular now with my wine. So I tend to drink cocktails when I'm out and I can't um, be as selective about my wine. So a couple of drinks that I love, really focusing on the clear liquors. So either a vodka or my new favorite is tequila blanco. And I actually make a little kind of spicy margarita, I call it, with um, soda water, fresh lime juice, and muddled jalapeno with tequila blanco. And you could even add a little splash of cranberry to that. And the other favorite um, alcoholic drink that I found over the summer were those Kettle One Botanicals. Have you tried those? Yes, I love those. Aren't they so Uh, good? Yep. I love the cucumber one and mixed with some kombucha. It's like the easiest cocktail to make and it's low sugar and it's delicious. And I haven't done a winter version or like a fall version, but loved it in the summer. Well, you know, I bet there's like that cranberry, like that GT's brand kombucha. Right. The cranberry one could be nice. And maybe with even like a little bit of orange rind or something could be festive for this time of year. So along with water, you want to be working out. You want to get your heart rate up um, multiple times a week. That can be, you know walking, running, biking, dancing, whatever it is that you love to do, as long as you're getting a nice sweat in, especially when you're going to an event that evening, you'll just feel better knowing that you worked out that day. Um, maybe you'll be less inclined to overindulge. I also think it just it helps with your feel-good hormones, right? So if you're feeling really good about yourself and positive, you're going to be less likely to just start like maybe snacking and overindulging a bit later that night and and the day after you know getting up and working out in the morning especially if you have had too much to drink or if you've eaten heavier foods you'll sweat out those toxins and you will feel better like it's just like stephanie said it's gonna bring your mood up your body's gonna feel better definitely helps you thrive exactly and you know just thinking of this we talked about the smoothie One thing I love to do the morning after a more indulgent evening is not only start the day with a workout, but have a smoothie the next day. So just completely reset. Forget about the fact of what you ate um, and what you enjoyed the night before and have a super nutrient rich smoothie the next morning and you'll feel so much better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, the next tip, it sounds again, pretty simple, but eat plenty of fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, and healthy fats throughout the day. So making sure you're eating, all your meals are balanced, that you're not going four or five hours the day of a party without eating, because then you're gonna go to the event and you're gonna be starving. And when I get hangry, watch out. So I will just wanna eat anything in sight, right? And and, and like most people. Exactly. Um, So how many servings of fruits and vegetables should we be eating anyway, even on an average day, yet alone the day of a big event? I mean, like 9 to 11, probably, of fruits and vegetables for the average adult. So, which most people struggle to yeah. get that in, right. which is why smoothies are a great way to add some fruits and vegetables in. Absolutely. You could get at least three servings of fruits and vegetables. In the morning. Yep. Um, so I know I mentioned this a little earlier, but before you head out to an event, if you have a little snack you won't go to the party starving. Like Stephanie mentioned, you know, being hangry. Um, That could be, again, a smoothie. It could be fruits and vegetables. It could be vegetables and hummus. It could be a hard boiled egg. Like it could be some nuts. It could be a whole slew of different things. You want it to be a well-balanced snack, the protein, a vegetable. And what if, you know, what if you're gonna be somewhere where you don't know what food's gonna be served and it's gonna be a buffet and you're going there at seven o'clock. I mean, I just personally eat dinner before. 
So you eat a, a whole dinner. If I'm going somewhere where it's not a sit down dinner, but right. if it's just a party that right. starts at seven o'clock and there'll be heavy hors d'oeuvres and drinks. And I know likely that the heavy hors d'oeuvres are going to be things that my body doesn't tolerate very well. And not even that, but just things maybe I don't even crave anymore. Yeah. I just eat dinner before I go. I mean, I like eating, you know, a little earlier on the early side anyway and not eating dinner at eight or nine o'clock at night. So I eat and then I go and I'm not hungry. Which is great. Yeah. So tip number six, chew your food. I know this sounds so silly. And when I talk about this with my kids, they literally laugh at me. But most of us inhale rather than actually chew our food. And digestion begins in the mouth, right? With the activation of saliva. So if we eat our food too quickly and we're literally swallowing whole, swallowing whole pieces of food, our body has to work that much harder to digest. It uses more energy. So one little challenge I guess we have for everyone is trying try chewing your food 20 times before swallowing. And actually maybe even more depending on what you're eating. If you're eating meat, it may take you longer. And when you do it, it's it's a good exercise because <laughs> I mean, 20 times is a lot if you're used to inhaling your food. Right. It feels like a lot. You're like, wow, I'm still chewing. <laughs> and I know this probably sounds a little gross, but honestly, your food should be almost liquid before it goes down, right? Your throat. Um, you know, it also lets your stomach catch up to your brain, right? So when we eat really fast, yes. our body then becomes really full. We've overeaten. So have some food, have a conversation, you know, don't just sit and inhale your food in five minutes. And I know that's the way, the way so many of us live our lives. And I'm easily a culprit of doing that and eating and food I in the car. And I am too. Um, but just be mindful of your eating will also increase your enjoyment of it. Like really take pride in what you made if you were cooking yourself and enjoy the food and the flavors and maybe even think about where the food came from. I know I'm getting a little off there, but the basic premise is chew your food. And that kind of goes right into our tip number seven, which is about being mindful of how much and what you're eating. So it's totally fine to go to a party and indulge. But if you want to indulge that evening, you should be mindful about it. Plan. Say, OK, tonight, you know, I I eat healthy all day today and tonight I'm going to eat the dessert because I'm very excited about it. It's a holiday tradition and I really want this dessert tonight. Um, but I'm only going to have, you know, one piece and I'm going to enjoy every minute of that piece. And yep. I'm not going to feel badly about it. Um, also be mindful about, you know, if you're in a buffet line, for instance, filling your trying to fill your plate up with mostly healthy items and um, just really kind of planning out what you're going to eat instead of just mindlessly putting food in your mouth. Exactly. Which is what a lot of people end up doing. Totally. I mean, the other thing, too, is just don't skip meals and don't skip meals with the intention of overeating. Like, oh, I'm not going to eat all day. I mean, how many people you go to a party and they're like, oh, it's seven o'clock. They're like, I haven't had anything since lunch. And I honestly look at them and like, I wouldn't be able to function if I hadn't eaten since lunch. You know, just plan, plan. It's just all about planning and preparation, right? And not that you can't be spontaneous, but a little bit of planning when it comes to your meals the day of a party and this time of year really will go a long way. And you can also, you know, when you're going to a gathering in someone else's house, if you offer to bring something and you bring something that you know that you'll eat, then you know you can go somewhere and eat something and enjoy it because you never know what, what somebody else is going to serve and you don't want to be rude and not eat anything at somebody's house. Exactly. I do that all the time. All the time. And it could even be just like a little snack something. Um yeah. Make some mixed nuts and bring those as a little gift or whatever. Yep. I love just, again, kind of piggybacking off of this whole mindfulness. Set an intention for the evening. Like, why are you going to the function? Are you going there to eat a bunch of food? And maybe that is. If it's like your favorite restaurant, maybe you're, that's why you're going is about the food. But try to think of a reason why you're going that is not just about the food. So it's catching up with people you haven't seen in a while. Maybe it's spending time with family and friends really engaging in conversation, listening, you know, having, just be mindful of why you're going to the social event and have it be something other than the food and drink. And a lot of times it's really thinking about who's going to be there and like making a point to have a really interesting and engaging conversation with them. And kind of, you know, going off of that, I know for some people, the holidays and being with family can be stressful. <laughs> no, <Yeah>. really? <laughs> and... Again, being mindful about that and think about how you could 
handle the stress of being around family that you may not always want to be around, how you can handle that in a way other than maybe eating your feelings, which I think a lot of people are drinking your feelings. What about the guilt? I mean, honestly, I talk to so many people and they say that they eat foods that they know they don't even like anymore or that disagree with them because of guilt because they don't know how to communicate with their family that maybe they don't like eating the food that right. they grew up eating anymore. Yep. And you don't want to offend someone. And I yet- think that's a huge problem. I ha- I have had a number of people tell me that their in-laws guilt them into eating something or say, well, how can you not eat this? Right. And it's like, I'm sorry. So be comfortable with your own eating habits and decisions. You can say, you know what? I'm going to do me and you do you. Yep. I, I'm so happy that you love this dish and there's more for you to enjoy. Right, exactly. More so, for you. If I don't eat it, you can right. have leftovers. <laughs> exactly. And, you know, I think part of it, too, is if if something doesn't feel well in your body, then why are you, why do you feel like you have to eat it? You know, like, would we tell someone with, like, a peanut allergy, would, we, ha- would, would, would we have them right. eat, yeah, eat the dessert because your Aunt Susie made it? N- no, right? And so it doesn't, maybe it's not, maybe that's a little bit of an extreme example, but I think it's just being true to what your intentions are, right, Marnie? Yeah. And actually, just one more thing uh, along those lines, hearing this, you know, also don't be that person that's pressuring someone to eat something. Right. Like, let everybody do what feels right to them because everybody does react to foods differently. Exactly. And another really important tip is to sleep. I think during this time of year, Sleep is one of the first things that just kind of gets tossed out the window. People are staying up really late at night. They're getting up early. They're running errands, running around. Exactly. Um, And then your immune system is weakened. And we're in cold and flu season. So that's the last thing we want is a weakened immune system, right? And I think that when you're sleep deprived, you tend, a person tends to make um, poor eating decisions. Oh, absolutely. Well, there's been studies on that, right? The people yep. that are sleep deprived, especially people that work a lot too. So you're burning the candle at both ends and then it's just hard to shut off the eating and right. the junk and you're, staying, right. you're trying to eat to stay awake too. Yep. And usually it's not, you're not eating a kale salad to stay awake. Totally. Or you're watching <laughs> a movie at night. late at night and you're just, the popcorn's going in your mouth and you're not even paying attention to what you're eating. You're just watching the movie and eating the popcorn. And That's it's never like, happened to me yeah. before. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Um, so yeah, just the eating and the drinking, right, can affect your bodies to get a good night's sleep as well. So when you eat and drink too much, I mean... Then you're like up at like 6 a.m. You didn't get enough sleep and then you feel like crap. I mean, right. and it's fine. You know what? Do that on occasion, but. Not every night. But not every night. For two weeks exactly. or three weeks or whatever right. the season is. This, is a, this, is, this could be a long, lovely season. It's the month but, of December. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so those are our top 10 tips. But, you know, I think we want to also kind of sum this up just saying allow yourself to enjoy the social gatherings with family and friends. There's a lot of traditions with food and parties and things like that, and you want to partake in them. You don't want to be that person that's all of a sudden, like, you know, antisocial either and not not fun. And, you know, if you do mess up and kind of have more to eat or drink than you had initially planned, tomorrow's yeah. another day. Yeah, please don't beat yourself up. Exactly. Like, just move on. It's and, okay. Right. And I think so many times we say, oh, well, we've already, you know, messed up our, quote, diet for two days, so... And we have another, you know, gathering coming up. So we'll just wait until January at this point. I mean, just reset, right? Like I talked about having a smoothie the next day. Wake up and say, okay, what good choices can I make today? So wrapping up, we have a challenge for the week. Um, or it could be for the next few weeks during the holiday season. Just try and take one or two of these tips and implement them. And share with us on social media tagging the art of living well podcast how it went for you hopefully hopefully you can take a couple of these tips and it'll be helpful to you and maybe it's one one tip per week yeah whatever works for you yeah and thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful holiday season marnie and i are so excited to take our popular sugar workshop online during this session you'll learn what sugar is the effect on your body We'll learn how to deconstruct sugar cravings, and you'll understand why sugar addiction is real. 
Plus, we'll dive into some of the emotional triggers. You can join us by signing up on theartoflivingwell.us backslash programs. We have two upcoming sessions on November 20th and December 11th, both at 1145 at Central Time, and both of those episodes will be recorded. We look forward to having you join us. Thank you so much for listening to the Art of Living Well podcast. We are so grateful that you joined us today. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with a friend or anyone else you think may benefit from this information. We'd love for you to subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, and tag the Art of Living Well podcast on social media. If you want more inspiration in between episodes, you can find us on social media at the Art of Living underscore well on Instagram and Facebook, where we will share snippets from our daily lives and our journey to living well.